on. Hello and welcome to Focus Outdoors. My name is Josh and today we're going to be focusing on smallmouth bass on the Mississippi River. We're going to be using a tried and true technique with a jig and live minnow and we're going to learn it from the pros. So stay tuned and enjoy the show. Well, what we're working with today, um, we're going to use a little bit bigger sucker minnows, which is typically not what you're going to use for, for smallmouth. Um, but again, the smallmouth fish being in the river, a little bit more opportunistic feeders. they got to eat when, when they have a chance to eat. So these bigger sucker minnows, what I found is that it's really not always the size of them. It's just more the action that they're alive. Sometimes it's the current pushing them down and doing it, but the profile of the bait is huge. I mean, you can come out and fish fatheads. You can use shiners. My best bait has been these big sucker minnows. I'll get one hooked up here. Pretty simple, pretty simple uh, hook up here. All I'm gonna end up doing is just grabbing one. So you're looking at probably four or five inch sucker minnow using a quarter ounce jig. Nothing special about jig colors or anything out here, but just a quick hook right through the nose, a little bit more through the, little bit more through the snout, and we're just gonna cast it out and let her go. So right now we're sitting just north of a rock pile. The, the current's coming down. Josh is hooked up on a smallmouth right now, um, but we're just letting that we're just letting these jigs blow back on top of the on top of the reefs, um, and just trying to you know those fish are just going to pick it up and eat it and and because they're going to sit with their nose pointing towards the current just looking for easy meals stuff to blow down. Um, I I believe with the water about 59 60 degrees they're getting ready to do their spawn here they're not quite into that spot yet, but a lot of the fish that we have have the big bellies. Um, Big bellies looking like they're ready to rock and roll here pretty soon. So hopefully we can get a get a couple of them going here pretty quick. So your way here. That's a that's a nice one, Josh. You need the net? Oh, well that's me. That's great. This this is what fishing's all about, hey. folks, is getting tangled. Teamwork. There we go. <laughs> that's a good one. These river fish are so fun to catch. I mean, it's still some of my favorite, my favorite things in the world to do is to see people get hooked up on these fish and just I mean, I've literally seen the guy that I had out here for the governor's opener was done after catching like 25 fish. Like, he was done. He had enough. Which surprised me. <laughs> Power. Yeah, that third yeah. Down. Since we're 0 for 3, we'll Yeah, since that. we should probably get one to actually make it look like we know what we're doing. I know, I hear that. Oh, that's a big one. That always trying to get a double in. Typical Mississippi River smallmouth caught on a big old sucker minnow. I mean, it, it doesn't get much better than this. And this is about the average fish we'll catch out here. Um, I'll put them on the board. I'm going to say probably 16 and a half, 17 inch fish. Looks really healthy, really good, nice, thick. The coloration is fantastic. Give you a shot with them there. You can throw them back, get a board on them. And worth a buck. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, and worth a buck. First fish. You gotta tell me that stuff. Oh, I was I was wrong on that one, Josh. You got an 18 and a quarter. There you go. It's a good way to start the day off. All right, thank you, sweetheart. So what we're working on right now is we're working on a rock pile. And the rock pile actually runs, there's two, actually two of them that run east to west on the river, it creates a nice little current break for them. Um, you get the current that actually comes through the island on both sides. And it kind of meets and what we're fishing right now is we're fishing a little bit of slack water there's a little bit of back current coming up off the rocks there's a good current off to our right 
And all we're doing is we're pitching the jig up in about probably seven, eight, nine feet of water, letting it flow back over the top of the rock pile, even sometimes letting it get back to the other side of it. So it comes up five, six feet, drops back down to nine, 10 feet. The key what we're looking for is trying to figure out where the fish are during the time of the day. Right now, they seem to be up on top of it a little bit, pushed right up next to the edge of it. There's times that they're out seven, eight, nine, ten feet of water on the front side. Sometimes they're on the back side, depending on the current, depending on the flow of the water coming through the system. It's the most interesting part for fishing the river for me, especially when you're working rock piles. Nothing's the same. It's a little bit less prone to get, you know, with, with different pressure systems, different things like that. It just doesn't affect him as much, but the fish will move because all of a sudden a log comes down, gets jammed somewhere, creates a new current break, the fish go congregate there. It's one of the most cool things about fishing the river, but it's also one of the biggest challenges. He'll bite it again. Hold on. He just dropped it back down. He never had it on there. There we got him. That's the fun thing about the smallmouths when you miss them. You can literally just drop it right back down in their face and they'll come up and smoke. This is a good fish. Josh, if you want to... Again, we got to we gotta make sure we get... I'm, I'm right here. I'm right underneath the boat. Maybe I should grab a map. Oh, this is a good one. One more time. One more time. That's fine. Make, make me work. <laughs> Perfect hook set. A good to release. That's a beautiful fish. Absolutely gorgeous fish. And again, that was caught on that big suckerman I showed you guys earlier. And those fish, you kind of look at their mouth and you're thinking, how do they eat it? But again, opportunistic feeders. They see that thing floating back down. The jig just keeps it nice and light on there. Um, Josh had asked me earlier about using stinger hooks. I don't like using the stinger hooks up here. There's too much garbage in the water. You get caught up on them. And then it's really hard to take them off with three more treble hooks. Um, I like to do this with my nieces and nephews, younger kids. I got a three-year-old that'll come up and do this with me. Having one hook is a lot easier for me not to worry about getting a hook in my thumb. So let's see how long this baby is. Josh, let's see if I have you beat. I think so. Oh yeah, 19 and a half. Look at that baby. That's a really nice one. We'll get her back and swim another day. So what we're using today is a jig, um, just a quarter ounce jig. What I look for, last time I was previously out here, um, the shank of the hook was such a big difference in what we were doing and making in a, and being able to hook up on fish with using those big minnows. Again, not liking to use the stinger hook. So what I did is I went out um, before we came out today, just bought a little bit longer shanked hooks just to make sure that we have the opportunity to be able to bury the, bury the hook in some of those fish as they come up and bite it. Um, you know, the small will come up and they'll just suck that whole minnow in. And if, you know, that shank of that bend starts right here, that makes it, it makes it really hard to hook up on fish. So getting a little bit longer shank, they do make, you know, more live bait um, jigs. Um, I'm pretty particular. I love using gold and silver. I don't think the colors really matter. We've caught them on everything. Um, just that personal preference of gold. Um, this is one of the new Google Eyes jigs. Again, you can use anything you want. I was just looking for mainly for shanks to shy. A little bit of the plastic holder does help the minnow stay on there a little bit longer to make sure that we uh, get good hooks in these fish. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels is your full-time gun dog training facility. For over 30 years, we've customized our training to fit each individual gun dog. We know it takes a well-trained gun dog to handle wild birds to make every hunting trip a dream trip. Let Midwest Gun Dog Kennels put excitement back into your hunt of a lifetime. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. No matter the size, age, or activity level of your best friend, you want a dog food that's natural, feeds great, and is full of all the goodness you demand. That's what we pack into every bag of Country Vet Naturals. Country Vet Naturals are just what the name says, natural goodness in every bag. We also make grain-free cat and dog food and treats. Learn more and find a dealer at CountryVetNaturals.com. Country Vet Naturals, loved by pets, trusted by owners. Well, as you might be able to tell, I spend a lot of time behind a shotgun. Whether it's at the clay target fields, sporting clays, doing exhibitions, 
or bird hunting. I always trust my shooting skills to the real elite. Not only for the lighter recoil, but as you can tell, the harder hitting, consistent patterns. These clay targets don't stand a chance when you shoot real elite. Make your next day on the water even better with Airwave Pedestal. The only air suspension system that can be custom adjusted to the weight of the rider. No unreliable springs, no oil-filled shocks to leak. Our patented design utilizes a two-stage suspension system to smooth out the roughest ride, a limiting travel to an industry-leading two inches. This boating season, enjoy your time on the water to the fullest. Find out how at airwavepedestal.com. On the motor, pig. Well, I don't catch them, so I might as well bet them. Yeah, right? well, you know, we bring you with. You better make yourself useful at some point. That's a big one, Josh. Yeah. Get over here, buddy. Nice, thank you. Again, it's just, it's one of the most, this Mississippi River and the fishery that this is. And, you know, for all the... Oh, I just had a one too. I think I got you. Hey. You got me? Thank you and a half. Oh, I thought because I just missed one. I'm like, what do you. Oh, Woo! Cole got him. Nineteen. Not quite. Hold on, let's get a double picture with those, you guys. You know, one of the best things about, you know, the, the Mississippi and this fishery is people, you know, kind of get overlooked. You kind of, you know, it has a reputation sometimes of being, a, you know, kind of dirty, kind of, you know, how do I do it? It's amazing how many fish can be in just a little stretch of water in one spot. I mean, you look at these, this double of fish that we just got here, you know, probably in 19 coal, I haven't seen yours yet, and I'll probably overestimate it like I always do. Um, but we got a 19 and then probably a, an 18 or a 19, you know, an 18, 17 inch fish. And again, very basic, picking up a few creek chubs, um, sucker minnows, just hanging out, just jigging, and just really easy fishing. And it's so fun to be able to go out and have 20, 30 fish days doing something so fun as, look at that one, right at 18. Double 18, 19 inch fish. There you go. Too bad we didn't have a tournament here. Perfect. Yeah, that'd be great, five by three. So, good fish, fellas. Different. Come on. Is it? I seen the bob. Yeah, Josh, and you are a, you are a master of the catfish. Yeah. Thank you. So when, we, when I was out here for the last Governor's Open, we actually caught five or six catfish last year, and they were big. I mean, they're 27, 28 inch catfish. Oh yeah. And the first time we got it up, you know, I'm using the using the guy's rod. It was uh, he had he had braid on there. I had his drake set loose, so we didn't lose any fish. And first time it came up, it flipped its tail, and all I saw was the white of the tail, and I thought we had a monster walleye on. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be a really big walleye. And so we get it up, we, you know, we get it up to the boat, and I see it's a giant catfish. And it's that kind of that disappointment of me wanting a big walleye on the opener. But that guy, he goes, I haven't caught a fish like that in like 30 years. And it's just that constant reminder of, you know, it's just, it's just fun to catch anything. I, you it's, know what? You're fishing for smallmouth where it's six feet of water, and all of a sudden a big catfish comes up and wants to eat. He ain't even budging. Good thing, we, good thing we put that new fluorocarbon leader on there on that 30 Perfect. pound uh, white, whatever line it is. <laughs> All I can tell you is when you're when you're doing that with a, oh God, come on you two rookies. <laughs> He's trying to help. I'm just, yeah, two, two reelers are better than one. When you're trying to do that with mono, like the, when I had that one, the guy out here and we had the mono out here doing it. It was ridiculous because you couldn't horse them in. You just sat there. The I mean, we fought. We fought one catfish for 35 minutes, and after that, I'm like, we're not doing this with mono anymore. Where was this thing on our catfish show? Huh? No, no. <laughs> How big is that one? Five pounds. Is it? There you go. That is a big old kitty. Yeah, you weren't getting, he wasn't getting up, was he? No. 
You got a good hook set on there. Oh, jaws. a nice fish. Now, here's the rule. You got to give him a kiss before you put him in. <laughs> <laughs> and for one second, Josh thought I was actually serious. Something big was oh, oh he's it. down there, he's down there. I what is him. that? It's probably a musky. Oh. It's small, it's it's smaller it's though. It's like a catfish coming up for it too. Oh, really? really? It's right there. It's right there still. Catch a bull! Oh we got two of them! <laughs> is that another smallie? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's awesome. awesome! That's a that net that's awesome. a net job right that there. That is awesome! <laughs> <laughs> And folks, you cannot ever make that make that up. That was the most craziest thing I've ever seen. Net and fish. <laughs> Net and fish. I got we got two. <laughs> what, what, what the point I was gonna make when you guys were reeling up that that um, what? I'm gonna anchor the boat here so why we get this when we talk and do this. When you caught that little that smaller smallmouth there, uh, Josh, if if you looked at it, they look like a giant gummy worm. And that's one of my biggest things up in Canada is imitating those smaller smallmouth because muskies and big game fish absolutely love those things. And the other thing is when smallmouths are, when you know, we're getting to this point of the year as they're starting to spawn or getting ready to spawn, it's very common when you guys are reeling them in to have another one chase it because they're chasing after the same bait, chasing after their partners. What a cool example of that. I have never ever in my life seen two go in the same net like that. <laughs> I've seen a guy throw it back and have it hit the lure. I have never seen that before. Cole, you're gonna have to hold that up because that's, guys, it's why I bring Cole with, because he will always do something that'll absolutely amaze you. Whether it's catching a fish or getting sunburned with sunscreen on, I, I don't know what it is, but two small eyes, two two small eyes in one net on that big creek jump too, huh? Yeah. Look at those. Those things are pigs. There you go. <laughs> Again, the beauty of the Mississippi River. Just never know what you're gonna get. Which one did you actually hook? This one. <laughs> and that bigger one. You, you guys wanted it. it. <laughs> Holy smokers. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels is your full-time gun dog training facility. For over 30 years, we've customized our training to fit each individual gun dog. We know it takes a well-trained gun dog to handle wild birds to make every hunting trip a dream trip. Let Midwest Gun Dog Kennels put excitement back into your hunt of a lifetime. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. Dakota Pheasant Guide offers the best wild pheasant hunts from the Glacial Lakes area of South Dakota west to the Missouri River. Packages available include everything from self-guided to fully guided hunts. Book your bird hunting adventure now. Fishermen, iTime Promotions is your ticket to an enjoyable and successful day on the water. Call Dennis Foster for your outdoor adventure of a lifetime. Dennis Foster here. I'd like to introduce you to the Drado Catch and Release Boat Latch System. It's back the trailer into the water, pop the cord, and away we go. Once our day in the water is done, we simply roll the boat up onto the bunks until it achieves contact with the bow eye. It clicks securely into place, away we go. We are exclusive partners with B2Outdoors.com. That's where you're going to want to go and order your very own system. You can enter the promo code ITIME PROMOTIONS and receive free shipping on your items. When it comes to dog food and treats, you want something natural. A dog food or special reward that feeds great, is made in the USA, and helps your best friend live a long and healthy life. That's what you get with Country Vet Naturals, natural goodness in every bag. And for those of you who want grain-free, we've got that too. Find a dealer and learn more about Country Vet Naturals dog food, cat food, and treats at CountryVetNaturals.com. Country Vet Naturals, loved by pets, trusted by owners.
just ended up switching, uh, going from just that plain jig head, throwing those up onto the shallow rocks on the sandbars. What we went to is just a real simple three-way rig, very similar to kind of what people will do with Lindy rigs. Um, or a bottom bouncer. What I found with running this this kind of the bell sinker about a foot down in, in your in your drop length and then about a four or five foot lead on it, what that dropper ends up um, doing is it ends up keeping your really keeping you snag free because this bell sinker won't do it. If you're Lindy rigging the whole thing lays on the ground and it's hard to get it off because of the where the weight is. By adding that little dropper on there in the in the in the middle, real simple setup just floating through 15 or 10 to 15 feet of water fish will come up and bite it don't have to do much with it they come up and pound it pretty good like we just saw with uh with cole's two small mouth spectacular whatever you want to call it which i've never seen before but real simple thing and especially when you're current fishing um this is something i've adapted from from fishing down by um red wing a lot where you can use two lines the only difference at red wing instead of having this be a dropper or a heavy uh, heavy uh, bell um, sinker this is just a heavy jig head with a plastic on it so technically you're just jigging that up and down current up and down current and you'll either catch them on the top or the bottom and it kind of depends where the fish are but it's obviously up here in central minnesota you can only have the one hook and the one rig so we just run the plane almost like just a, just a lindy just a lindy rig setup but kind of a hybrid between that and what i was referring to with the two jigs is a dubuque rig so pretty easy way to do it real efficient way to cover water and catch fish and keep your bait on the bottom let's get back after it. this is right where we had that double you can just see that one jump as a nice smallmouth i think we got another i got to get back there and not a fish okay go we're getting yours first a boy. All right, you got yours up, Josh. Well, here we go. We'll flip over, open the bale. Oh, this is going to be a mess. It's not too bad. Well, good thing we're doing a smallmouth show fishing for walleyes, huh? Good hooks, that fellas. Good thing the captain of the boat hasn't caught one here in a while, so we'll just keep floating around here in the abyss. Good fish, guys. Sneak out of the way. Yeah, right when you guys caught those, we had just came off. I was working up the side of a rock pile. Um, again, running those three ways just to get down. Sometimes it's hard when you're running those jigs to make sure that you're down on the bottom all the time. You get the current blowing, you get wind. Fighting that and really understanding, you know, the reason we I switched to these out here is it's just a confidence issue. If you know your baits in the strike zone, I think you, you just, you're gonna have more chances to catch fish. And I feel like Heckendorf was this morning not catching any fish, it's fantastic. <laughs> It's getting cool. You actually should probably caught more. Well, I feel like I get double for the, the two we caught. Yeah, you uh, right. you win. That's all I can no, say. No, I, I can't take all credit to that. But that was probably the coolest thing I've ever done fishing. That's uh, I think I call that a dilly bar fish. <laughs> stop it. We'll stop at Dairy Queen and get a dilly bar for that one. I think we got another smallie on here. Oh yeah. Josh, if you want to net them. See, I just hold out for ones that are big. Cause that is a big, you got one on there? Oh yeah, I got one. <laughs> I got one. You are the most ridiculous human being I've ever seen back there, Hector. Take my rod back. Yeah, you have a fish on there. Oh yeah. Okay, give me the, give me the. You know, again, we got a double. I'll wait for Cole to get his up there. I got one on. You have two. I just caught two. We got a triple? <laughs> we really have a triple? Yep. I mean, this is this is really fun fishing. I'm not going to lie to you. And part of it is it's, it's just really simple stuff, right? You know, you got a big heavy weight. That's another thing. I think you beat me on that one. I'm going to have the smallest one. I didn't, it got off when I was trying to. Oh! <laughs> how big? Look at those things. That's a tank. I, I caught that one with my left hand, so. Yeah, and this one, you can't even see it just on that little three-way. You know, you're not giving them line. My hook is gone. Completely swallow that little, the little middle. I mean, these fish are in here doing one thing. They're feeding. They're getting ready to either they, I can't tell if they're spawned out or if they're spawned. Look at these things. I mean, that's, this is what dreams are made of, you know? Fantastic. Thanks, sweetheart. Back in there. <laughs> these up. I'm just using a um, VMC wide gap walleye hook, size two. Pretty easy stuff offset shank so that that bait can get set in there. I'm a big believer in red hooks. I usually have 
80 time, 80, 85% of the stuff I run has red hooks, especially when I hand tie it. Um, there's some lakes that it doesn't matter when I'm pulling crawler harnesses. I don't see much of a difference, but single hooks, pulling leeches, colored hooks are, are a big part of it. Really a big fan of red ones. Um, they seem to be doing the trick today. So um, one of the things that we're looking for on the locator is you're looking for any type of little break in the water that changes the current. Um, when I get to fish different parts of the river and there you get some saugers and stuff like that is that you can always find some saugers on the rocks. The walleye sometimes will be there but one of the big things that walleyes relate to is wood. Trying to find either its branches or a down log using your side scan. Um, something that just changes it but that, that wood usually attracts some smaller insects which attracts some smaller bait fish and, and, and do it. So it's just different times finding the bait and what they're feeding on but usually in the river if you can find wood you're going to do pretty well finding some walleyes. So. We found some, found a little piece right here. Got a couple bites off it today. If I could ever hook one and put them in the boat, we'd be a lot better. Um, but good thing, uh, good thing Josh is back there saving the day for us on the walleye side of things. One more pass sometimes always helps. Got one that came up and hit it. Nice little walleye. Not, not a big one. We got a double walleye in the back. Whoops. One in the back. Good thing I have, good thing I have conservation. On the <laughs> and there she goes. You got a nice one there, Cole. Uh, kind of the same thing. Very smaller, but you know, that little section we just went through had a, had a little couple of sticks on the side scan. Yeah, huh? Still a fish. Ooh. So there you go. Now we got up to four species out here: pike, catfish, smallmouth, walleyes. It's an amazing fishery, folks. And the best thing is, there's nobody else out here. You know, just being north of St. Cloud, 15, 20 minutes. There's just you always risk, you know, going to a lake and you're having a whole bunch of people, especially this time in the spring. And man, is it nice to be out here and just fish by yourself? Okay, I mean, what's that pole there? It, it's, I know, it's that you can't, you really can't. I can't tell. I'm gonna say no, but I'm probably using walleye. Look at that. Oh, that's a nice net job. That's, not that bad. that's a nice walleye right there. Perfect release right into the net. You know, and it's still crazy as we're, you know, as we just switch, you go over, you pick up a nice, uh, nice female there. It's, um, these fish are all done spawning. They're kind of just starting to recover there. That's a perfect eater fish out of, out of this system. And it's just kind of spot specific. You know, just, we just slid off, off a rock pile, heavy smallmouth, come in a little bit closer, a bit more current, pick up a couple walleyes. It's just, it's, again, it's just the amazing fishery that is in Mississippi. So, nice fish, Josh. Had a thank, you. thank you. Thank you. I just want to throw out a thank you to Damien and Cole as well for joining us today, uh, hooking us up with the fish. Uh, just take these tips that we learned today and uh, just remember these three things. We want to practice conservation wherever we can. We want to take a kid fishing and uh, take time to focus on the outdoors. Thank you. Diesel train rolls down the line As I'm headed for the land of corn and rye There is a place I'm always satisfied For remedies to ease my worries